Oh, yes. no. I had 24 hours to make a decision. I got called by my manager and they said uh, the show called Chanel wants to do a test there. Like, but, but, you know, they were getting me in there and I had 24 hours to assimilate this series as my next step in my career. But then when I heard John Favreau was on board, but Dan Farrow was producing, uh, with John Favreau, I just knew they were really good players in, in Hollywood and Los Angeles to be involved with. And I had that idea with Garbage, and then it was going to be a high end production. And then the cherry on top was that it was actually filming back in New Zealand. Like, this was my first audition, having landed in LA after Arrow and everything, you know, and, uh, and I got sent back home. For all the right reasons, yeah. you know? yeah. because because being sent back home meant that I went home to do a series with all the people who created, you know, the same people that I worked on with The Hobbit, you know, like Shannara, in terms of its production, all the people doing sound, lighting, camera, all that stuff, they're all the people from Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit, you know, the set designers, so as soon as I walked into the set, it was like, oh, this looks just like the big productions that we do for film over there, so, you know, MTV are going, uh, so you know, throw a, a lot of uh, a lot of uh, you know uh, they're going to throw their hand on the table, you know, and take a big gamble with this as a as, a, as, a, as a, what really should be on a film scale. They're they're, they're bringing to television, but I mean, yeah, that's the new age of television. Keep on knocking the bottom. What are you able to tease about your characters, like for example, when we first meet them, like in the first episode? Well, my character, she's one of the few humans in the Four Lands, um, because uh, the story basically takes place in the future, where most humankind has been extinguished. And I'm part of the Rover Group, and Rover Group are, they're, they're thieves, they're a nomadic group that goes around, they don't have a really good reputation, so she's from the wrong side of the tracks, basically. Her trail comes from a very tough background where she's had to learn how to survive, how to gain perspective and, and in in the first episode we'll see how badass I like to say she is and and how she she's kind of selfish and that's how she's learned to survive but and then ruthless but she just has such a big heart and she's at the end of the day she just wants a better life for herself and it's her journey and you guys will see slowly little by little how she starts growing and how she starts seeing new horizons. Yeah, but I, I think with I think with Ivana, you know, like I think some of the casting choices in the show were really interesting. You know, they actually went for people who had been involved in, in genres that, that the audience already knew about. You know, you were involved, involved in a pan's labyrinth. I mean, you know, to associate you know her as a young actress and that, and her stepping into this American production, you know, uh, Chanel is like a it's a big it's a global tie-in. You're getting international actress and somebody who's got that kind of pedigree, you know. And uh, I, I mean, I remember when I heard the girl from Pan's Labyrinth is going to be on this. I was like, wow, that's that brings a lot of weight with it. You know, then Austin is like the next young Brad Pitt or Leonardo DiCaprio. He literally is, but he's got a heart of gold, and uh, you know, he's he's you know just an incredible young talent to be working with. You know, this is the exact vehicle that he wants to, to sort of charge his career forward. And then, you know, Poppy. I mean, Poppy is. I don't know. She's. She's just extraordinarily beautiful and talented. You know, she's like a Burberry commercial. <laughs> so you know, but she can she can act. You know, which is which is which is just wonderful. You know, I mean, she's English. You know, so she brings in another international element to it. You know, I'm a New Zealander. You know, people know me for my action roles. You know, and bringing it into the role of Alanon. You know, uh, Terry grabbed me today and he said, you know, look, I want to tell you, you know, like you filled Alanon's shoes. And you know, to, to be honest, when I first had started looking at the images of Alanon. I saw that he was seven foot tall and, you know, uh, had a long hair and a long beard. I, I thought, I don't sort of look like that. But they, and they've given me a completely different look in the show than what the uh, pictorial version of Alan was in the books. Uh, the sort of shaved side of my head, and scar on the patient the back of my neck. It's a very different version of Alan on. But for Terry to sort of say to me this morning, you know, after he's seen the first eight episodes, that it's just, you know, it's reinvented but made the character what he believes the quality of the character is, it's, it's awesome. But, you know, it's, it's like, uh, 
It's like, you know, Tolkien's, you know, how long it took for Tolkien to come to the screen was based upon waiting for the technology for it to be capable to make the films that could bring that visualization to life. And again, I say that that happened in New Zealand with New Zealand practitioners, and that's why, you know, uh, Miles and Dan Farah, our producers, have, uh, have shows in New Zealand because they know the production qualities there. And the bigger hurdle to climb now is the fact that, you know, eight years ago when Peter Jackson went, oh, 10 years ago, I can make I can make Lord of the Rings now on film. Well, now they're going, well, we can make Shannara on television. And it really is staggering. I mean, if you saw the plates on the trailer this morning... It I looks mean, like a movie trailer. Well, you, well you, you, see, you see the Seattle's, you see Seattle's uh, Sky Tower, was it called? Space Needle, Space Needle. Yeah, you see the Space Needle lying side on in a swamp. With two, with a, I mean, look like there's lichen and things that have grown over two giant skyscrapers, and and, 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 you, and that's when you know our characters are riding into this swamp area and they see that landscape. I mean, you just couldn't have made this for television eight, two years ago. You know, the bar, the bar's going so high now. Are the visual effects comparable to any of the movies and shows you've been on before? The Hobbit, yes, because because it's just the same people, it's the same people, the same artists. Yeah, not, not in my case. I mean, I have been in many genres of things, in fantasy films, including Pets Labyrinth, where there's a big element of, uh, there's a lot of visual effects, a lot of fantasy going on, a lot of green screen, but I've definitely never been in a project where it's to such a big degree, so amazing, so groundbreaking. So, to me, I mean, I'm a newbie in this, basically. How much of the show? Well, the thing is, it's, 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 as well, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm used to doing it in film, you know, with the whole, you know, where you can spend days just getting a couple of minutes of footage, right? But knowing we're doing TV turnaround time, and yet we've got that production value there, it's it's a sign of the time, you know. It's, I mean, Shannara is a kind of a it'll be a breakthrough, it'll be another hurdle in, in the evolution of television. You know? it's, 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 it's where television just gets that little bit closer to film, and you can sit at home. Come home from work and turn the television, turn your big giant HD, 3D television, whatever you got to be seeing these days, and this will come on and we'll be like, wow, you know. <laughs> I don't even have to go to the movies.